I will present the idea of an economy that is oriented towards the common good and which partly already exists. Niet winst en groei moeten het doel zijn van onze economie, maar het algemeen belang. Want zoals het nu gaat, is volgens econoom Christian Felber de wereld op zijn kop. Thank you. The movement which engages for an economy for the common good has just celebrated its 10th anniversary. But the idea and value of the common good is much older and has existed throughout time and space in human societies. Aristotle defined the original oikonomia in the way that the goal was the well-being of all members of the household, the oikos, whereas money and capital were just means. If people strove for money and capital first and foremost, he wouldn't consider it as oikonomia at all, but its opposite, krematistike, today, capitalism. Considering capitalism and economy as opposites is a thrilling legacy of Aristotle. Adam Smith, though being famous for his saying on the invisible hand, which by the way he mentioned only once in his thick book, The Wealth of Nations, was much more importantly an advocate for the virtue of universal benevolence, to which he dedicated a full section in his first thick book, The Theory of Moral Sentiments. The philosopher Adam Smith wrote about feelings and values. That was the fundament of the political economy of his times. GDP, by contrast, is much younger. It only emerged in the 20th century and was criticized from its beginnings. Robert Kennedy concluded his critique of GDP in 1968 with the words, it measures everything except that which makes life worthwhile. Today, democratic institutions say that the overarching goal of economic activities should be the common good. The German basic law, for instance, says, property entails obligations, its use shall also serve the common good. The Bavarian constitution says, the economic activity in its entirety serves the common good. The question is, why then do we measure economic success with the monetary GDP, the financial profit, and the financial return on investment. What do these financial indicators tell us about the common good? The answer is nothing reliable. And even worse, it is possible that economic activities impact negatively on the foundations of life, our basic values and the common goods, and still create positive financial results. In an economy for the common good, all economic activities are oriented towards the common good. Accordingly, success is measured with a common good product on the level of national economies, with a common good balance sheet for companies, and with a common good assessment for every single investment. Oh my God, would markets still exist? Yes, they would. <laughs> would there still be private initiative and property? Not unlimited, but yes, they would. Would it still be capitalism? No, it wouldn't. Because capitalism is first and foremost about making money and accumulating capital. The proposed reforms would transform capitalistic markets into an ethical market economy. Let's start with the common good product. The common good product would replace GDP as a welfare measure. It could be composed directly by the people in a citizen assembly. In these, the people propose what in their view contributes most to life quality and the greater good. Maybe 100 proposals or 200 will come up. Of these, 20 will be sorted out and turned into the facets of the common good diamond or the 20 sub goals of the common good product. The common good product measures what really matters in our lives, such as health, happiness, thriving human relationships, education, political participation, sound and stable environment, or global climate. The common good product measures 
what makes our lives worthwhile. With a common good balance sheet, companies report and publish what they contribute to the common good, positively and negatively. And the higher they score, the fewer taxes they pay. The cheaper they get finance, and they get priority in public procurement and economic promotion. Thanks to these incentives, the prices of ethical products that today are higher than those of dumping products become lower, similar to the concept of true prices. Finally, the laws of the markets align with society's values. In the financial sector, common good banks and investors, before granting a loan or funding a business, apply a common good assessment, which checks the impact of every investment on the environment, the global climate, distribution, social cohesion, gender relations. And only if none of our fundamental values is damaged and none of our common goods expropriated, the financial risk assessment is done in the second step. And if both exams are passed, the money flows where it should flow into a holistically sustainable and truly economic development. Aligning economic activities on all levels with the democratically defined common good lies at the heart of our vision. Only those activities that at least do no harm will remain operable, whereas activities that actively do good, like reducing poverty, improve working conditions, or build up trust in the society, will enjoy a competitive advantage, just the other way around as today. ECG will put the economy from its head on its feet. There are more elements, such as limiting inequality and power concentration, ethical trade instead of free trade, equal ecological rights for all humans in order to keep mankind as a whole within the planetary boundaries. The whole model comprises 20 cornerstones, too many for a short TV talk. So let's take a look on the implementation process. In line with the concept of post-democracy, we do not see our governments and parliaments ready for deep and systemic transformation. That's why we propose to give the sovereign citizens the right to decide on fundamental questions of economic policy by themselves. It's about more democratic design of the economy. The principle of sovereignty could be the centerpiece of such a reform. Sovereign comes from the Latin terms superanus and means literally to stand above all. Somehow we all know that in a true democracy, we the people should stand above all. But do we also feel it in every cell of our bodies? If the people really stood above all, they would enjoy a series of sovereign rights, from rewriting the constitution to adopting an international agreement, from preventing the parliament from passing a certain law to initiating a law on our own. If the people had these rights, I am fully convinced they would never allow banks become too big to fail, free movement of capital and tax havens, high frequency trade, patents and living organisms, or unlimited inequality. If people could rewrite the constitution, they would put the common good at the heart of our economy. Why am I so sure about that? Because I developed a game, Economic Democracy, which I played with thousands, tens of thousands of persons in more than 20 countries. This game allows to decide to decide on the seemingly most difficult questions in a playful manner. Let's take, for instance, the biggest obstacle to systemic change, which is the over-concentration of wealth and power. First, I ask the audiences where to limit the highest incomes in relation to the lowest incomes. People used to propose five times, seven times, ten times, sometimes 20 or 30 times. Then they vote on all proposals, but they don't show their affirmation, they show their resistance against every proposal. And that proposal that provokes the least resistance is the winner. That proposal which restricts our collective liberty 
in the least possible degree becomes the rule. In the voting, both the lowest proposal, sometimes no inequality at all, as well as the highest proposal, sometimes 100 times or even no limit at all, both meet an extremely high resistance, whereas more moderate proposals in the middle score better, and the least resistance usually is provoked by factor 10, between the highest and the lowest incomes. For comparison, in Austria, my country, we have currently factor 1,250, in Germany, factor 80,000, in the US, factor 360,000. This is just one example how the people could make a difference if they had the power, if we advanced our beloved democracies and put them into a more future-fit shape. Would you like to share this power? Welcome to our movement. The ECG movement started 10 years ago in Austria, south of Germany and north of Italy. Since then, it has spread to 33 countries, including the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. Around 3,000 companies have joined and 700 have done a common goal balance sheet. Farmers, banks, public health insurers, universities. Now, more and more cities join, including the city of Amsterdam. In Barcelona, a whole district has done a common goal balance sheet and now helps private businesses to do it as well. In Germany, the first city, Steinheim, with 20,000 inhabitants, is the first common good city. Next step, cities and regional governments check out how they can use the common good balance sheet in their public procurement and economic promotion programs. Our highest political success, we celebrated at the European level. 86% of the members of the Economic and Social Committee voted in favor of the inclusion of the economy for the common good in the legal framework of the European Union and its member states. Well, there is some hope that we also achieve something within the current democratic system. Currently, we're trying to influence on the European Union's directive on non-financial reporting and make ethical reporting as mandatory as financial reporting. We only have a half-time lobbyist at Brussels, but let's see where we grow. And this is what you, and everybody else can do. Become a member of the Dutch or any other association, join the next local chapter or create a new one, initiate the common good balance sheet in your company, start a citizen assembly and create a common good index in your city, or connect our young movement to others, such as the commons, the donut economy, the degrowth movement, B Corps, or rethinking economics. Don't wait for tomorrow. Engage and create with us, co-create with us, an economy for the common good. Thanks for your attention. Meer Brainwash? Meer verrassende ideeën? Ga dan nu naar brainwash.nl Human. Human.